In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about using Adobe Captivate 8's drag and drop capabil uh, capabilities, specifically how to make your drag and drop function the same way that other quiz question types behave. So let's get started here. I have all the raw material for, for this particular knowledge check in this case, and you know the correct answers are in present form lined up with their uh, their drop locations here. So to set up a drag and drop interaction in Adobe Captivate, uh, you're going to go to the interactions um, button and select drag and drop. There's a couple of other ways that you can do this and uh, there's plenty of videos out there that explain that. So uh, it's a three-step process. It's very straightforward you simply want to select the draggable items for this interaction. So I'm going to click these three boxes here and then I'm going to click Next. And now it's looking for uh, the drop targets. So again, all you have to do is click on those and any order will do. And then click Next. And then the third and final step will be to drag and drop the draggable items to their drop location. Essentially you're just drawing an arrow. Uh, you'll see a little circle in the beginning of all of these guys here. I'm just going to move this failure message out of the way a little bit. And we're just going to drag that arrow to here. And I'll just scroll down this page a little bit here. And again, you see that little plus with the uh, circle around it. Drag that to the correct spot here. Now, a couple things to note. As you saw, the, uh, the failure message appeared. Keep that on your page. And also, a submit button appears. And we're going to fix it. It's a little skewed here, but otherwise it'll be perfectly functional. So now I'm going to hit Finish. And what's happened now is that now the drag and drop has been set up. So I'm going to do a couple things to, to set this up and I'll just kind of go through them relatively quickly here but you can follow along. Uh, the failure message in this case I'm just going to say incorrect. Very similar to what would be a default message. Incorrect and I'll just say try to recall it's almost a hint uh, message as opposed to a failure message because I'm going to give people multiple chances to get this uh, particular drag and drop correct. So try to recall what you learned in the, let me just resize that a bit here. Previous lesson. Please try again. You know, nice message. Not too, uh, you know, nah, 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 you were terrible. Whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that up to the side here just so it's out of the way of my drag and drop here. Um, the one thing I also want to do is uh, my submit button is skewed for whatever reason. And just if you go to the actual style here, this is an image button. If I just click on it, it, it will reset it to its proper location. Uh, or proper size and in this case I usually like to have it at 700 and 494. That's the correct location for that particular button. Let's go to the uh, the timing of this. It's a 6.3 second slide. There is some narration uh, and some closed captioning for this slide but again nothing to change here. We'll be looking at the timeline in a few moments, but for now let's just take a look at this. Uh, we'll take a look at the drag and drop, and uh, what we're going to do here is on success, we're going to continue, and on failure, um, we can leave this as continue as well. I'm going to turn on infinite attempts. Alternatively, you could select uh, a maximum number, but you know, in this case, uh, the infinite attempts will work nicely for this particular uh, interaction. So this is a six-second slide, approximately. 
Let's have the pause a little bit later. Let's go three seconds. That's just a, a choice here. Uh, I don't want to auto submit the correct answers. I do would like I would like to to have a reset button. So I'm going to turn that on. And by default, it chooses the uh, submit button that I had before. But let's go back to properties and uh, take a look at style and just click on, in this case here, I have a um, an image button called clear, which will work nicely. And we'll just change the location of this. I like to have this over to the left. And again, 494 is the row uh, location that I prefer that to be. So let's get back to the drag and drop here. So we're going to pause after three seconds. We have a reset button. You can include this in the quiz, of course, if this is going to be a quiz question. Again, we want it to behave like other quiz questions. So you would check this off, assign a point value, and check off add to total, and you would also probably want to report the answers in case you want to be able to uh, evaluate your course later and you know which questions are successful and and so on. In this case I'm using this as simply a knowledge check partway through the course so I'm actually not going to include it in the quiz. Going over to options we've got the hand cursor so in other words as I hover over these items uh, it will let me know that that's a draggable item and everything else is pretty much set. Now I'm going to turn on the timeline because what I want, what's missing from the drag and drop, and if anyone's experimented with Adobe Captivate 8's drag and drop, you'll realize that there really is no correct caption here. Uh, you could do it on another slide, the, the proceeding slide, but in this case here I'm going to set this up to um, have a correct caption appear after the normal pause location. And to do that properly, I will need to see the timeline. So let's make that visible as well. So I'm going to now insert a, well, I can just do it from here, a text caption. Now it's just choosing a default caption style. I'm going to change this to a default success caption so we'll match the other success captions that I have elsewhere in my course. Remember this slide is going to pause after three seconds so I'm going to have this caption appear after 3.2 seconds let's say. And the message could be something as simple as correct click anywhere or press Y whoops, to continue. And that's great, but you'll, if you've played around with the, uh, the drag and drop functionality, you'll realize that that's not an option that's available to you. So to try and get, uh, to try and get this to function the same way that a normal quiz question functions, we're going to need to add a big invisible button over top of this. And uh, how we do that is we're just going to uh, insert a button interaction. And the easiest way to do this is just drag it off to the side here. We're going to go to properties and we're going to do a couple of things. It's a transparent button, so I'm going to make the opacity zero. I can keep a stroke because this will be useful later when I want to find the button. Uh, we'll make it nice and thick so it's quite obvious there. We don't need a caption for this button so I'll just get rid of that. And uh, I don't need a corner radius so that's fine. All that's good. So the action will be simply go to next slide and we're going to want um, a pause. So we'll have this appear at 3.2 seconds. So again, the same time this caption is appearing. And we'll pause it after, let's say, one second. Let me just fix that, 3.2 seconds. 
And now all I need to do, oh, one other thing I want to add is that shortcut to let the letter Y also function. Um, so that's fine. We can have a hand cursor here. Disabling the click sound is something I would recommend. And now all you need to do is make this button large enough to cover the entire slide that you're working on. And that's pretty much it. So let's test this out. This should work quite nicely. Um, let's do a little preview here of the next five slides. So these are just lined up. I haven't put them in any kind of random order, which incidentally is something you would have to do manually. There's no um, uh, there's no built-in randomizer function. You'd have to place them uh, how you wish. So let's do this wrong first and see what the result is. Oh, I need to fix the the uh, the drop location, but we can do that in a second here. Let's hit submit. That's incorrect. So clear that. Let's do it obviously wrong again. Submit. No, that's not right. So let's do it right this time. And submit. Correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. And of course, if I do that, I'm going to proceed to the next slide. So let's, there we go. So the one thing that you may want to do let me just move this button off the page for a second here. I'll, don't forget to put it back. Um, when you're working with uh, with these items, uh, you want to make sure that the snap behavior uh, will be to the bottom because I've got these tiles set up and these smaller tiles should go below the title. So let's make sure they're all the same there and that should work perfectly fine. Let's just test that out again. Preview next five slides. And this should function very much like any other um, any other multiple choice or true false question that you might be using either as a simple knowledge check or as a final quiz question. So we'll just do this. We'll do it. So that's a, a lot nicer looking. Let's hit submit, see what the result looks like. Correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. And then we move on to the next slide. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, I really recommend that you subscribe to my channel. That way you'll find out about the new videos as they come out. And if you like this particular video, please give me a thumbs up.